You're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio by the editor of AfricanFootball.com, Neil Gregg, of course, also the former editor of Kickoff Magazine, to talk about Bafana Bafana and what's next for the national side after crashing out of AFCON 2015. Neil, thanks for coming in. Good to be here again. Um, okay, we've, got, we've had two days to recover from the disappointment. <laughs> uh, time to reflect. I'm sure you've been very busy. What went wrong? Where were the sort of real weak links in um, our sort of approach to this tournament? Oh, maybe one of the first weak links to talk about is um, South Africa's expectations mm. as a whole. Um, if anyone expected us to go far, uh, it would have been based on pure luck or just mm. something turning our way. Because we never had a team, we never had a competition team. We never, had, we never selected a squad able to compete and go through to um, any knockout stage, especially the group we were drawn. Maybe if we had been in an easier group, we may have had a chance. But against those three teams, uh, on paper and the, the makeup of our squad, we were nowhere in comparison. Um, so that's the honest truth. But yeah, we all hoped, um, given the way we played, some of the football we played, um, and scoring first in all three games, that hey, maybe we mm. could do something here. But interestingly, all six goals conceded were um, after the 60 minute mark. So what does that say about your team if you yeah. last half an hour of a game, you, you conceding, and then the manner we concede, if it's not a set piece, it's a ball played into the area, and we have a very young, inexperienced central mm. defense and goalkeeper, of which we change each game, a young yeah. goalkeeper. So that little area where you, you kind of win tournaments by your center backs, your goalkeepers, we didn't pick players of any experience. It was a young team. So I think in, in a nutshell, maybe that answers where we lost the games, um, is that we didn't have experience in goals, we didn't have experience at the back, and we might have scored goals and played some neat football, but when it came to uh, the soldiers closing shop and, and carrying out tactics till the 90th minute, yeah. we were found wanting. Mm. So defence then being the, the, the main problem, I mean, um, our, our strikers, well, I mean, our, our attack didn't seem too, too shabby this tournament. In creating opportunities, yes, mm. and in turning, def I mean, the fact that we turned Algeria's defenders around mm. six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, um, Africa's number one team, is quite amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I was pleasantly surprised. We got behind them, we tricked our way through, we passed our way through, mm. a very, very good side, and we did that again in the, lo the second two games. That's positive, but that's always been a strength of Bafana mm. footballers in South Africa. It's always been a strength. Um, the, the weakness is often putting the chances away, and that did pop up again mm. uh, with Tekelo Ranti just missing a lot of chances, mm. and uh, no one to say, I'll be the Benny McCarthy or the Sean Bartlett, and mm. I'll finish. The, we don't have that player. Um, that's probably as big a concern as what we saw in the defending in the last 30 minutes of mm. each game and the defending of set pieces. So mm. nothing much has changed. We still have the same problems in our makeup as a football team, but at least this is a young group and we can progress and teach and try and find the right players to, to get into those gaps. Mm. I mean, you, you mentioned Sean Bartlett and Benny McCarthy. You've got Ma Matthew Booth coming out now, you know, former goalkeeper, mm. saying the same thing. We need more strikers of the ilk of those guys. But I mean, it sounds like we've been playing that card for way too long now, you know, living in the glory days. Surely we, our football's evolved from then, and I mean, surely we have strikers of that potential. Well, it's we interesting. Just, I don't the, know. The game has changed as well. I mean, when Benny and Sean played, it was two, two forwards up front, traditional four foot two, mm. um, and you would feed off each other. Now it's a different system of play. So mm. you have attacking midfielders scoring the goals, um, guys like Sibu Sisu Vilakazi, who did well for us mm. when he played. Because um, we scored some cracking goals, yeah, I mean, yeah. particularly that one by Songa on, you know, in the third game. And yeah, often those. those are the players scoring while your target man does all the hard work and players come in off him and around him and from wide positions score the goals. So we do have players capable of doing that. Um, the question is, consistently at the highest level, under mm. pressure, can they deliver? And so um, you would like to think that the Vilakazis and the Masangos and even Ranti and um, hopefully the likes of Tulani Serrero if he's called back. These mm -hmm. are the players who will score goals, even if our traditional number nine is not scoring a lot of goals, mm -hmm. um, if he's doing his job. If, uh, and Sean Bartlett often did that job. He didn't mm -hmm. often always be the goal scorer, but he would often uh, allow for shoes and doctor other players to come in and score the goals. So the game has also changed. I don't know if we mm -hmm. will see another Benny, um, arguably the greatest South African footballer ever. Mm -hmm. Um, Bartlett was a more hard-working <coughs> player, very talented, but you know I haven't seen many guys work as hard on their game as Sean Bartlett mm. of the current generation. Many could be, but his character and attitude 
saw him go and play in the English Premier League. And so Benny was just a raw talent, a uh, great talent. So it's a yeah. tricky one. 